Thank you very much. Uh, I found the title of the panel here very challenging because it called for a consideration of an inclusive mechanism that would bring about regional cooperation and security, a kind of a new architecture, and how to put it together so that it would perform its function. And I was reflecting about this desire to engage in architecture and engineering as a very, very uh, interesting aspect of the profession of statecraft. And I recall that the only time I think we had in the Mediterranean a real regional arrangement that covered almost the entire sea and did see cooperation and security was in old imperial times. That is to say, either Hellenistic or Roman. Since then, I don't think we never had such a construction, but it is challenging to think about it. And indeed, what brought it about uh, was uh, the confluence of, that, of events and developments in that part of the Mediterranean in the last decade or so. Some have to do with, uh, uh, with economic developments, primarily energy, but others having to do with the dynamics of the Middle East and the in an international activity. So a few thoughts and reflections about the option for putting together such an architecture. Well, in the first place, you try to think who would be the members, who could be the members of such a construct if you follow the idea of being on the literal of the, of the sea. Well, you have Libya, you have Greece, you have Turkey, you have Cyprus, you have Egypt, you have Israel, you have the Palestinians, you have Jordan sometimes, often referred to as Mediterranean, although it does not have any access. It does have access, but it is not on the shores. Well, these are the players, and when you think about those players, you already realize how difficult it would be to bring them under one roof, institutional and otherwise. But then, upon second reflection, you notice that the regionals are not the only active players here. You have practically everybody else involved. You have China, which had established roads all the way extending to Piraeus, and you have Russia, which have reestablished its presence primarily at the heart of that theater. You have the old US, even when it withdraws, it does not. You have the European Union, which of course incorporates some of the countries which are members of that uh, entity. Uh, you have Iran getting closer and closer, Qatar too, Saudi Arabia, old imperial powers like France, and of course, even distant powers like India, all taking interest and all playing different roles, sometimes conflicting roles, which only complicate the matter. So indeed, what exactly is the thought of creating a, a framework that would be by definition a multilateral with this kind of very odd bedfellows that each one bringing its own baggage to the thing? On top of that, uh, all these organizations or states have already affiliations to other regional organizations, and when these do overlap, it creates complications. As said, some of the uh, Europeans, Greece, Cyprus, are part of the, and Turkey, are part of the European structure and belong to powerful uh, regional institutions, be it the EU or NATO. Um, others belong to the Mediterranean group, which is part of a European initiative. So we have here an instance not of a void, but in fact of countries belonging to different regional and sub-regional constructs, uh, which does not make it any easier. And as said, when you bring those uh, parties together, they all bring their baggage, and what baggage it is. They are all involved in all kind of conflict with other members of the same, of the same uh, group. Uh, let us just think about uh, the baggage th with which some are involved. Well, you have some involved in Syria. Now, what a quagmire that is. And in that, in Syria, you have about half of the other parties involved directly or indirectly. You have the perennial Lebanese crisis, an unfortunate condition but which complicates matters. And Lebanon is playing a greater role in the Eastern Mediterranean because of the energy potential. You have Iran putting its feet closer to the Mediterranean and invoking the process some opposition on the part of other countries. You have the old Turkish, Greek, uh, tension, which is also manifest uh, in Cyprus, and last but not least, we have our feud with the Palestinians, which is 
there and is part of the Middle Eastern equation. So what on earth could make one believe that countries could transcend uh, their specific conflicts and come under one roof in which they would cooperate? And one could go on and even think about other actors which are very much, much manifest and are not considered for the pleasure of the company of joining the group. For example, Hamas or Hezbollah or Daesh, uh, which play power politics in the region, often are entertained diplomatically, but are not states and do not make, make it any easier. In short, the more you think about it, you, you come to the point that you think that the exercise in trying to think about a regional cooperative arrangement is an exercise in futility. There is nothing that could bring it about. What there could be, there would be some smaller constructs, such as trilaterals, which are ad hoc. Of these, we have many. Uh, bilaterals, that's easy. And then the one I like most is the unilaterals. Um, you know, an organization consisting only of oneself. The reason I'm smiling at that is because if you think about Israel, for example, Israel is not a singular entity when it comes to energy policies. It has in its own internal debate, and that too becomes a baggage about what the policy would be on gas exports and the like. So even unilateral is, is complicated, but these are at least the possible thing, and of these we do have many. So the question, therefore, in my mind, and the conclusion I'm arri arriving at, that rather than constructing a regional, a new regional construct, we should be deconstructing, because the deconstruction is the one which gets us away from the need to overcome impossible baggages that they all bring to the table. Suppose it were to be an organization which is led by the principle of consensus. It would be, it would be paralyzed from day one. So the notion of cooperating effectively should be best managed not in the context of an overall regional thing, which is, as I said, an exercise in the impossibility, but rather in deconstructing into smaller cooperative arrangements, which would be much more elastic, which would be tailor-made to the thing that present themselves. For example, on certain matters pertaining to energy, we have Israeli, Cypriot, uh, and Greek cooperation, and that's perfectly fine. On other matters, we have larger cooperation. We've just had military exercises, because let us not forget that it is not only energy that is making this theater very, very active. There is a naval buildup, and there is a growing presence of foreign fleets in the region, so it has become a, a real active theater, but there too it could be done cooperatively, more cooperatively or less cooperatively. And if that is the approach that would govern the future direction when you arrange cooperative possibilities, then the rule of the game should be, I noticed, the rule of the game should be one of gradualism, of pragmatism, of not seeking ambitious constructs that do not lend themselves to anything useful, and then using the classical uh, modes of cooperating, cooperating in an elastic, practical uh, way on each one of the things which are on the agenda. So in conclusion, if you find me uh, uh, saying at the end that I was called upon to suggest the possibility of a regional construct and I finished with a deconstructive concept, I would say in my defense that that was done in the best Delphic tradition. <laughs>